Hey there, Jim Johnson for AccentHelp.com, and I'm talking about mostly the American realization of diphthongs. So first of all, we're going to talk about the price diphthong. So the price, ah, uh, I. So the first half of this one tends to be written with this forward ah uh, sound, which is a little bit like the ah uh, sound of father. The realization of it is that mostly folks do it sort of halfway in between those. So it'd be very possible that you could say, well, it's this one, but it's pulled back a little bit. This is a diacritic for saying that it's basically pulled back in the mouth. It's a little bit further back in the mouth. Or you could maybe realize it as this one, the one there at the back, the father vowel that we talked about in the vowel set of things, and you could move it forward. You could also try to go with this upside down version of that, that turned typed A, but then we're starting to move into symbols that are less and less familiar, and that becomes more problematic for people, especially if they are learning phonetics. So I like to start with the ones that are a little bit more common and then tweak them from there. So for the moment, let's stick with this one instead of this one, recognizing super common to move it to something in the middle. Pra, pra, a, a, ice, price probably something sort of there in the middle. I like to think of this vowel as the pakika and Harvard yad, the sort of Boston pakika, where it's really, really forward in the mouth, price, price, where it tends to be a little bit more in that direction rather than in the direction of further back in the mouth. So the biggest thing that you will tend to hear in American accents, other than some things I talked about in the intro to diacritics, where it'll get greatly affected by an L after it or by an R after it, is that the stereotype is Southern accents drop the second half of the diphthongs, diphthong so that price simply becomes price, the price, right? Now, in many Southern accents, that is the realization of it. Sometimes you get a subset where they only do that if what's after it is either no vowel, so a word like my becomes ma, that's ma, or if what's after it is actually a voiced consonant, so that price may not drop the second half, but simply a word like pride might. So you might get some southern speakers who will say price, price, where they get a little bit of the second half, but then they'll say pride, pride where I have a lot of pride in my work, where you get the second half completely dropping away. A lot of Southerners, though, will drop the second half just overall. That, that what I would say, is the biggest thing, other than that generalization of some neutralization uh, that I talked about of what can happen to them overall. Also, the tendency for the second half to be short in accents in general. Now, that dropping of the second half where it simply becomes this is something that you can hear in other places as well. Like you can hear this sometimes in a Yorkshire accent. That's the price. What was the price of that? The price. So you can get the second half dropping in some other accents as well. But the biggest thing that you tend to hear variations on in the States with regards to this one is the second half disappearing, especially in Southern accents. That I would say is the biggest variation that you'll hear in the States. And that's a little bit of an intro to the price diphthong. If you want to dive a little bit more into this, you can see materials for learning a variety of accents at accenthelp.com. And specifically, if you want to dive into American accents, you can look at the generican materials that go into a relaxed generican accent, an elevated generican accent, and also go into that trans-mid-Atlantic sort of sound. There you go. Thank <laughs> you.